Rani, who's in the, um, yeah, in the College of Engineering and Computer Science, Teaching Engineering. And uh, I, I'd like to um, testify, I guess, that, that I, I had the privilege of reviewing a lot of engineering model sites recently. And Salman's absolutely shone as being the one that the <coughs> students knew that the teaching staff, or Salman in particular, really cared about them and, and their, their progress and their success. Someone's going to be talking to us about boosting, boosting participation with poll everywhere. Thanks. Uh, morning, everyone. So today I'm going to be talking about uh, using a classroom response system, such as poll everywhere, to boost learning. So <clears throat> this is briefly what I'm going to talk about. First, uh, different types of classroom response systems that you might select and use uh, at ANU. Uh, we're going to have a look at and discuss the pedagogical aspects surrounding the use of a classroom response system. Uh, and, and finally, some lessons learned uh, and conclusions. So <clears throat> basically, classroom response systems are, no, are not a new technology. So we have Paul Francis here. <laughs> And this is a picture from one of his talks that I found on, the, on his website. So ANU Physics was an early adopter of clicker systems, which is an example of a classroom response system. So basically the way the clickers work is, the clicker is a transmitter, uh, and you need a receiver to collect all the responses, and then you need software to generate polls. Nowadays, the clicker has been replaced by the smartphone, and the receiver and the software have been, their functionality is combined into internet servers. <coughs> so, as has been uh, mentioned in the last talk during the discussion, so Poll Everywhere used to be the official ANU recommended classroom response system until December last year, and then this year now uh, we the official recommendation is to use Echo 360 out. So the free account of Poll Everywhere uh, supports 40 students, and the instructor account, which I have and I use in my teaching, uh, is uh, $650 US dollars a year. So it is not cheap. Uh, an alternative to Poll Everywhere is Learning Catalytics by Pearson. So this uh, software was uh, originally developed by Eric Mazur at Harvard, and it was acquired by Pearson in 2013. Uh, a number of first-year courses uh, in ANU, uh, in science and engineering and business and economics, use another of Pearson's teaching and learning platforms, which is Mastering, so basically it provides online uh, homework opportunities. And if you're using Mastering in your course, use of learning catalytics is actually part of that license. So you can also evaluate uh, learning catalytics uh, for use as a classroom response system. Uh, in addition to these three major options, I found this uh, resource uh, from Carleton University useful. So there are other programs available. There are many other programs uh, that provide the basic or advanced functionality. Uh, so learning catalytics is mentioned here. Some actually still use physical clickers, but most of them are either relying on a web-enabled device and internet servers. <coughs> so before we proceed, I just wanted to say that while well, the main purpose of this talk is not to compare Echo 360 and Poll Everywhere, uh, <coughs> the, my motivation is to discuss the, the pedagogical aspects surrounding the use of a classroom response system. But I will say on this, so if you're thinking about choosing a classroom response system, choose the one that suits your teaching needs. So for me personally, I adopted Poll Everywhere back in semester two last year when it was the official uh, recommended classroom response system. And then when Amy moved to Echo 360L, I evaluated Echo 360, I, always, I, I was already familiar with Poll Everywhere. I looked at Socrative, this, this program, and also Learning Catalytics, and then I decided, well, I want to stick to Poll Everywhere for now. So choose a system that suits your need. However, be aware 
that technology is evolving very fast in this space. So you can reasonably expect to change to a new classroom response system anywhere from two to five years. So this, is, this unfortunately comes with the package of deciding to adopt the classroom response system. So be patient with yourself and your students as you learn uh, a new classroom response system. Okay, so we've already had use of Poll Everywhere in the first keynote talk and in the last talk. I'm going to use it in a different way, so I will still ask for your participation. So in the previous talks, the Poll Everywhere was embedded into the PowerPoint slides. I'm going to run it as I do in my teaching. So I'm going to, I've already logged in, and let me just enable a poll. So what I will ask you to do is just uh, use your uh, device, whether a tablet or <clears throat> a tablet or uh, your smartphone, and just uh, how are you feeling today so far? <clears throat> so I would expect that if you're teaching academic, you would be happy, semester's <laughs> finished, right? So, so this is an example where I'm able to see the live responses where I come in. And it's a very visual poll because you're clicking and indicating your mood. So this is one way in which, uh, you know, this is just a, <coughs> uh, one way to use it. Now, um, this next poll is really important. This is how I actually uh, use it. So, okay. <coughs> <laughs> These things happen. So I've started a timer here, one and a half minutes. So inside a typical smartphone, the basic building block is a BJT. It doesn't really matter for today what, a, what is a BJT. But I would like you to take an educated guess how many BJTs are inside a typical smartphone such as Apple i47. So take an educated guess. <coughs> So you can see that when I run off the web, I can see the number of responses that are coming in. So this allows me to gauge, uh, yeah, there's about maybe 20, 25 people present here. So now that I've got the responses in, I'll pause and show result. Okay. <laughs> so most of you think 3.3 million uh, is maybe a good guess. Okay. Now what I would like you to do is, Talk to the person sitting next to you, or in the row behind you, or in front of you. I'll restart this timer. You have 30 seconds. Discuss with the person sitting next to you, and then in your app, you can clear last result and re-vote. So, talk to the person sitting next to you. I'll get rid of this. <laughs> Are you happy with your guests? Can we come along? Yeah, let's go for those three minutes. So, 10 seconds to go. Please, everyone, if you decide to change your results, now is the time to do it. Please re -vote. So, I imagine everyone's done. Okay, let's see. Okay, <laughs> so people managed to convince each other, maybe 33 million is the right answer. Well, it might surprise you. <laughs> it's actually 3.3 million. And if you look at the stats on the Apple website for the latest iPad, I think it's close to 10 billion. It could be even more. Isn't that fascinating? <clears throat> so I guess what this little demo has shown is that Poll Everywhere can easily turn any classroom into an active classroom. And it's this element of discussion that is really important when you're using a classroom response system. So Poll Everywhere, uh, we have seen, so you can have multiple choice questions, you can have open-ended questions, 
There's a lot of functionality in code everywhere. So in my teaching, I've used multiple choice word cloud, open-ended Q&A, these clickable images. <clears throat> uh, but there are all sorts of other features that are available. Uh, and in my experience, the support team for Poll Everywhere is really great. I've had a few feature requests, and usually within one to two weeks, if the request is a genuine one, they will consider and implement it. Uh, as we saw, <clears throat> There is support for, uh, we haven't looked at this, but there is support for latex. So this is very important for science, for STEM subjects, where you need to typeset a lot of maths in your quizzes. Uh, and also, students can respond via smartphone, tablet, any web-enabled device. Uh, and I guess, compared to Echo 360, they don't need to first log into Wattle to be able to answer the poll. So in my experience, it, it runs very smoothly. <coughs> Okay, now that we've had a brief uh, demo of the technology, uh, I'd like to discuss the pedagogical aspects. So suppose you are considering using a classroom response system in your teaching. Because this is not new technology, there is already a lot of literature and wisdom out there. So I've tried to summarize five main things you, need, you should consider when adopting a classroom response system. First and foremost, you need to combine technology with pedagogy. Using technology is not a gimmick. It can be a gimmick if it is not backed up by pedagogy. So <clears throat> in the literature, there are lots of advice and uh, recommendations available for common teaching pedagogy, such as cooperative learning, interactive lectures, how best to combine a classroom response system with pedagogy. This, in my view, is the most important thing. If you, uh, I've got five minutes left, I'll try to maybe finish in like seven minutes, and then you <laughs> still have time for some questions. If you combine uh, technology with pedagogy, then you know what the purpose is, but you also need to explain to the students why you're using a classroom response system. If you don't, the students will think, oh, this is just being used for tracking their attendance or, or completion, but they will not relate it to benefit to their own learning. So explaining to students is really important. Also, in terms of implementation aspects, uh, the recommendation is maybe speak for 10, 15 minutes in a, in a lecture and then have a poll. So have two to five polls in a typical 15-minute lecture. When designing the questions, then if they're too easy or too hard, they lose the, the effectiveness. So the, the, the activities or the questions that you select need to be challenging enough to motivate a discussion, some meaningful interaction uh, with the material. And then, you need to be savvy with how, you, how and when you show the histogram of responses. Because if you show the live responses, often it biases the weaker students, so they just answer what the majority is saying. So you need to be savvy about how and when you show this, and then you can decide whether, how to continue with your lecture, whether you need to have more activities, or the students are grasping the concepts, you can move on. Now, if you combine technology with pedagogy, then there are many known benefits that have been reported. So both from the lecturer's perspective and the student's perspective. Uh, in large classes, it helps the quiet, shy student to feel more valued. And these days, students are using their uh, smartphones anyway in the lecture, so you know we can use that technology to engage them. And from the lecturer's perspective, there are other benefits as well. In addition to these benefits, there are some known issues. So obviously, the license availability cost is, a, is an issue. There is increased workload on the part of the lecturer. And also some change in behavior for, from the student perspective. So they may need to come to lectures prepared. This is a change in behavior. Some people have said, well, technology is just a gimmick, it's a distraction, why waste time? This is an opinion that has been voiced. 
And also people say, is the benefit due to pedagogy or due to technology? So these are some issues to keep in mind if you decide to adopt um, um, a classroom response technology. The main point that I want to make, and then after that I'll just be very quick about my, my presentation, is the ANU context. So as you all know, for next year we'll have these wonderful active learning spaces that will be available. So among other things, uh, students and uh, lecturers will be able to not only share screens, but also share live content in class. So if I'm using the document camera uh, or a tablet, the students are doing the same and we can share live content. So the question is, how can we adapt, evolve, change our pedagogy to make effective use of such active classrooms? In my view, the use of CRS is an essential catalyst. So adopting a CRS technology sets you on a path which I believe then makes effective use of these kinds of new uh, uh, active learning spaces, and indeed in any environment. Okay, now I'll be very quick about this. This, was, uh, this last part is uh, uh, not the main focus of this talk, but <coughs> I've been using code everywhere in large first and second year classes for the past three semesters. And uh, my personal teaching pedagogy is related to this idea of cognitive apprenticeship. So basically, how to think like an expert. And in my case, how to te teach students to think like an expert in uh, electronic engineering. So cognitive apprenticeship is a very well uh, respected idea. And my focus was, how can I use Paul Everywhere to help me achieve my objective of teaching students to think like an expert. Now as I was preparing this talk and I was reflecting on my use of Poll Everywhere, I came across this published research. So it's looking across different disciplines and how we can combine technology and pedagogy. And practice two and three are the ones that most relate to cognitive apprenticeship. So teaching expert thinking to students. So indeed, the way I have used Poll Everywhere in the past three semesters aligns with these two practices. Uh, so this is one example. You target a particular concept. In this case, this is a circuit. And then I can design polls to uh, focus and discuss around that concept. Uh, I also use, I love the document camera. I love my tablet being able to write in class. So you know, this is a screenshot of my actual class working. And now I can embed poll everywhere to make problem-based learning more effective, more targeted, getting more students involved. So you know, one step could involve, or all steps can involve poll everywhere. And of course, the basic practice, you gather student feedback, you can have a word cloud, and it is really a, a, a beneficial feature. So uh, just one last point. So the main lesson learned, which I didn't foresee from reading the literature about the use of CRS was, uh, a lot of students are not coming to live lectures, but they watch the lecture recording. So initially, my layout was this kind of a circuit. So this kind of a layout, the options are visible on your smartphone. But to a student watching the lecture recording, they couldn't make out what the circuit was about. So I guess the advice, one specific advice I would say, is to make sure that you are aware of your audience and uh, the layout of the poll is such that it is visible in the lecture recordings. And the, the student feedback, students love uh, having a classroom response system. Uh, negative comments as well. Uh, and, and these mainly relate to the student's ability if they don't attend live lectures, they see this is not useful, or if they haven't got the message of why we are using uh, our classroom response system. So I guess I'll stop here. I've really used up all my time. But if there's a quick question, I'm happy to take it. Thank you. There's still a minute for questions, but sure. maybe you'd like to move over here Open when 
someone is record, um, looking at the recording of the lecture? Is that right? So at the moment, I will run the polls during the lecture, and then in the, the lecture slides, that information is captured, the final poll result. And then maybe before the mid-semester or final exam, I can enable those polls. So there is functionality to leave the polls open uh, and close them at whatever time you choose. Okay, one more minute. Questions? Yeah, yeah. Just a question. Uh, since the students read a lot of them, could be a TikTok? And for example, if you don't have time and you come to some lecture without poll everywhere, could it be some frustration associated with the fact that you So don't yes, I think, uh, so in my lectures, I use a number of technologies, uh, like Poll Everywhere is one. I use simulation tools for live in-class demos. So yes, initially when I started using Poll Everywhere, students would comment that you're not using enough of the technology. And my response then was, I need to explain to the students there are certain activities which I will use Poll Everywhere heavily. And then for other activities, there are other teaching and learning tools that I will be using. So it's about communicating to students why and when you're using the technology. Otherwise, yes, the response from students was, we want more and more for them. They couldn't get enough of it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.